many more excuses do you need to make before you examine yourself and say, okay, maybe I need to wake up a little bit and take a good long look at what, what I've been doing. Realize that the environment that this president has trafficked in can help to lead to these sorts of situations where people think that that sort of behavior, meaning the people who are doing these things, the people who are um, calling the cops on people falsely in Central Park, the people who are chasing people down the street in Georgia and killing them, that you may begin to think that your actions are normal. Welcome back, everyone. Before we get this rolling, I just want to make a couple things clear. First of all, I'm not attacking black people. I don't hate any group of people based on skin color. It's not my style. It never has been. My only goal here is to debunk hysteria and outright lies coming from the media. So they're really going to try and blame Trump for the actions of one cop. As if none of this ever happened before until Trump came around. Even though it happened multiple times during the Barack Obama administration. When these things happened during the Obama administration, the media incited violence and racial tensions to the point that police officers were actually being ambushed and murdered. Now they're trying to do it again with this latest example of a police officer killing an unarmed person. You'll notice that I didn't say black man because this actually happens to people regardless of skin color, but without any of the fanfare or news coverage. Reason. You think you're gonna fall, you better fall on your face. Your hands go back and go towards me! <laughs> Don't go! Because reporting on those killings might provide a little context and show that this issue isn't 100% about race. I've always found this funny because what they're actually doing is dividing and diluting any actual resistance to this law enforcement corruption. Who knows, maybe that's the whole point. Now, I do apologize for this interruption. We'll get right back to the video. But I gotta take this quick capitalism break to thank this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. Let me show you all one of the things that's helping me to look better and feel great. In the year 2020, it's important to keep your body healthy all the time. Collagen may be the closest thing that we ever get to a real fountain of youth. And many health experts now agree, consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renewing and revitalizing how you look and feel. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and is essentially the glue that holds you together. In fact, after age 20, people produce about 12% less collagen in their skin each decade. For some, the decline is even greater. In short, this year-by-year -year escalating loss of collagen is a key reason people look old and explains why skin sags and wrinkles, hair gets thinner, nails lose their strength, joints become stiff, and in general, our bodies just seem to turn on us over time. So visit my page at www.healthwithdronetech.com and secure your supply of the best collagen on the market. In any case, Don Lemon isn't letting a crisis go to waste, grouping up three totally unrelated incidents while failing to mention any examples of black on white violence because I guess that just doesn't matter. That's really strange too because there's actually quite a bit more black on white murders than the other way around. Quite an accomplishment considering we're talking mostly about black men who are about 6% of the country. But we all know how CNN and Don Lemon feel about black on white racial violence. A white teenager with special needs tied up and beaten as a group of young African Americans shouting anti-white slurs and calling out Donald Trump. Um, you just try to wrap your head around evil. That's what this is. It's evil. It's, it's brutality. It's man's inhumanity to man. And um, for I don't think it's evil. I, I, I don't think it's evil. I think these are young people and I think they have bad home training. So this is absolutely sickening, but I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. The picture Lemon is trying to paint here is that America is deeply racist and dangerous for black people. And this is largely due to Trump. How? Why? Notice he doesn't provide any examples for either of these questions. He just insists that it is. What has Trump done that has targeted black people or any other racial group? I'm sure lefties would point to completely made up controversies like the good people on both sides misquote and the media 
media lied that he called immigrants animals when he was in fact talking about MS-13 gang members. Other than that, black unemployment has been lower than it's ever been, of course, before the lockdowns. I ask again, what has Trump done to these minority communities that's supposedly so evil and racist? That's the meme that's going that... around right now with the cops, with the black kid on the ground saying hello to the white guy in camo with the AK-47 and the mask who was protesting in Michigan. That when it's white people with guns and they're out and they're angry and their faces with cops. Didn't see any of that. Everybody's civil. In Flag burning, spitting bad. in police officers' faces, yelling, yelling at police officers armed, armed with heavy weaponry. Heard of people make, make it a joke, but it's, it's funny because it's, it's tragic and sad. If black people said, let's all go out and get guns and start the protest, that would be the fastest change of gun law culture in this country. Yeah, wrong. Yeah, the meme is out there and it's stupid because it completely ignores all the examples of armed black people protesting and having absolutely no problems. The New Black Panther Party, Black Lives Matter, and other leftist groups regularly protest with their heavy arms, but without any of the media outrage or hand-wringing. Others at CNN have been stoking the flames, like April Ryan, tweeting out that black families need to have the talk with their kids about how dangerous the world is thanks to white people. This of course ignores the reality that far more white people are murdered by black people than the other way around. And again, black men are 6% of the country while white men are around 35%, meaning white people are actually very underrepresented in racial murders while black men are overrepresented. The only thing the talk is doing is instilling racist beliefs into young minds that'll grow up hating and fearing white people and thinking that that's completely normal. At this point, I do want to remind you all that I'm not saying all this as an attack on black people or suggesting that their skin color has anything to do with it. I'm only throwing out these stats as a defense against race hustling scumbags who would use these incidents to justify their racism and their hatred for white people. People like Eddie Glaude Jr., a frequent race hustling guest on MSNBC who said yesterday, You have a community that is experiencing trauma and terror simultaneously. Minnesota just hit its peak with COVID-19 yesterday in terms of the number of hospitalizations and the number of dead. So we're dealing with the, the, the devastation of this pandemic and we're seeing Ahmaud Arbery. We're seeing Breonna Taylor. We're seeing George Floyd. Um, we have to mm -hmm. understand how profoundly racist our country is. Glad you leave me every time with no words, especially today. Um, let's just vow to keep having this conversation every day. Wow. First, let me say that this is no conversation. This is two ideological allies with no differing points of view, spouting a bunch of rhetoric and claims with nothing to back it up. If it was a conversation, you might have somebody else with a different perspective offering different information and data. Second, he's attributing a worldwide virus outbreak that started in China to white people launching some sort of a racist attack on black Americans. Americans. This is completely insane and it will only lead to divisions that will never heal in our lifetimes. This guy throws out three arguable examples of white on black violence claiming that all black people are being terrorized somehow while in reality more whites are dying at the hands of black people than the other way around. But they never talk about those incidents. Why? Well, because they don't want any negative blowback on the black community. Which begs the question, does that mean they do want negative backlash on white communities? And it's also worth pointing out that the police kill way more white people than they do black people. And many of those white people are unarmed, but it never makes a national news story. The media hates and demonizes peaceful anti-lockdown protesters, but covers for violent criminals destroying their own cities and looting their own stores. Sometimes they even deceptively edit video to protect their narrative, like in this case, where CNN and other media outlets edited out a Milwaukee victim's sister calling for violence in white suburbs, claiming that she was actually calling for peace. Burning down shit ain't gonna help nothing. No, burning down shit we need in our community. Take that shit to the suburbs. Burn that shit down. We need our shit. We need our weed. The kingdom come, thy will be done. With his sister calling for peace. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight. We're still waiting on those final numbers. They use isolated incidents to advance their...
They use isolated incidents to advance their narrative and ignore the vast majority of incidents because it disproves their narrative. They're corrupt, race hustling crooks who will usher in the burning down of America before they reevaluate their behavior. This is the state of our country and its most important institutions. On that note, could I convince you to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to this channel? I would ask you to hit the bell icon too, but I know that's just getting greedy. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.